There's a report being shared around by a lot of the international global media. I mean, businessnews.com, uh, many different sites reporting this information, saying that an Australian battery company has been able to boost the energy capacity of lithium ion batteries by 55%. If this story were true, then this is the greatest battery discovery in the history of mankind, potentially. I mean, 55%. For standard lithium ion batteries, all they, all they have to do is just use these new cathodes, essentially, and energy density is just going to double, more than double, or energy capacity. But which is it? I want to share with you this story, and then I want to, well, kind of break down what I think is really going on here. Is it true? Is some of the story true? Is all of it true? Should we pay attention to this? Because, I mean, maybe we should. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I'll be at the Sydney EV show on the 8th to the 10th of November. Come along. The show's going to be great. It's going to be the biggest EV show ever in Australian history. And there's going to be more cars, more stuff going on at the show. Love to see you there. I'll put a link in the description so you can get a discount on tickets. Stubiaco-based Altec Batteries has supercharged its alumina-coated silicon anodes to boost the energy capacity of lithium-ion batteries by 55% after combining graphite with its high-tech anodes. So it appears as though really these guys are working on cathodes and anodes, not particularly uh, batteries themselves, you know, as a total package. They're not coming out and saying we have these new um, type of batteries and they're going to be amazing. They're saying that basically you could potentially use these anodes and cathodes on any, and potentially, you know, many different NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese battery types. For example, I mean, a Tesla 4680 battery cell, you could just use these anodes and cathodes and all of a sudden you would boost the energy capacity, capacity, not density, a uh, bit of a weird thing to, a bit of a strange word to use, but capacity by 55%. The company says that their game-changing results come from their strategy to coat silicon particles with alumina. This overcomes previous drawbacks associated with using silicon as an anode material. Now, it's true that silicon uh, degrades much faster than graphite, and so that's one of the challenges that Panasonic and many other comp companies around the world, Tesla, everyone else, that's one of the big challenges they've faced in using silicon in batteries. I mean, in theory, using silicon in uh, the battery in batteries can potentially increase energy density by just staggering amounts. We're talking triple, even more than triple the energy density of today's batteries in theory. So what exactly is alumina? Well, it's just aluminum oxide. Sorry, Americans, but that's how you correctly pronounce uh, aluminum. It's aluminum. Anyhow, basically they're saying that the main thing they've done is simply coat the silicon particles in alumina, in aluminium. Subiaco-based Altec Batteries has apparently claimed that this game-changing technology can increase capacity of lithium-ion batteries by 55%. It's very unusual for companies to make that, to use that word though, capacity. Um, it's normal that they'd use the word energy density. So that does have me wondering what exactly that means. Anyhow, Management says the game-changing results stem from their strategy to coat silicon particles with aluminium, overcoming previous drawbacks associated with using silicon as an anode material alone. The company's previous cracking of the silicon code by increasing the energy density of its anodes by 30% when compared to a standard lithium-ion battery has now been blown out of the water with the new test results ratcheting up this stunning 55% improvement to the average energy capacity. Now, the key question is how, assuming these batteries are legit, and it sounds like they could be, very possibly, are they ready to go into electric cars yet? Well, hmm. Altex says the use of alumina to coat the silicon particles helps overcome two big drawbacks with silicon use in anodes. During battery charging, silicon particles can expand by up to 300%, leading to swelling, fracturing, and obviously, battery failure. Battery degradation is much faster using silicon. That's the big issue with it. In addition, silicon can deactivate a high percentage of the lithium in the battery, which is kind of a technical, but essentially some of the lithium is no longer used, and this reduces the battery's performance and its lifespan. 
The company says that modification of its silicon particles with the alumina coating can resolve capacity facing issues or fading issues caused by first cycle capacity loss of up to 50%. And it says that its test work shows stable battery and cycling performance. It says initial issues with the dispersion of the silicon particles within the graphite mix are resolved by a process known as spherification. That's hard to say that word. Say that fast five times, I challenge you. This method involves the silicon being produced into a sphere shape to blend better with the graphite and enable distribution into graphite voids within the anode, minimizing the negative impact to the electrode layer caused by the expansion of silicon. So it is actually a, a fairly complex kind of battery that they have developed. Altec Batteries Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director Iggy Tan said, we are thrilled with the significant progress we've made, blah, 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 blah. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear facts. During the recent testing, the dispersion issues with the silicon particles were tackled and defeated by a persistent research and development team led by non-executive director, Dr. Ying Yan Lu. Lu played a key role in actually developing the first initial batteries and basically working out how to stop these problems that silicon can cause. Silicon's fantastic, in theory, massively increasing energy density um, and capacity, apparently, according to these researchers. But obviously the pro problem with having a battery, right, if it has very, very high energy density, but it only lasts for a few years and it's expensive, then you know it doesn't make sense. It's kind of interesting. Most people probably haven't heard of this company before, but Al Keem went down the merger path a few years a few years ago with United States-based Levent and became Arcadium Lithium. That company made headline news last week when subjected to a US $6.7 billion takeover bid from Rio Tinto. Keep in mind, right, silicon has 10 times the energy retention capacity of graphite, meaning, like I said, the energy density of batteries using silicon could, could rise, could potentially within 10 years triple. And it makes it an ideal addition to anodes to help mold the next generation of lithium ion batteries. This is exactly what many companies are trying to do at this point in time. The significant increase in retention capacity from the high tech improvement in these batteries has resulted in a jump to about 500 milliamp hours per gram of mass for the company's anodes. This is in comparison to 320. So, we don't have any energy density numbers for the batteries, you know, at a cell level or a pack level that we can kind of easily understand. But it does appear that battery energy density has increased by around 40 percent. I mean, that's crazy. That is truly a revolution if this is legitimate. And it could be. Altec has constructed a pilot plan adjacent to its proposed project site to enable the relevant qualifications to be obtained for its new age anodes, and it is now in the commission phase. In other words, they're a long way from actually producing these batteries at scale, or at least producing the parts needed to um, use someone else's batteries and transform them using their tech at scale. The huge leap in energy capacity from the company's improved anodes is the type of change that could provide an enormous boost to the EV industry. I mean, you're looking at potentially um, just using this technology in existing battery formats. And this would be a, the kind of thing that this company would license to say Cadle or Tesla or Panasonic or even BYD. I mean, companies that want to drastically improve their current existing batteries could potentially simply change the chemistry, change the ingredients. It wouldn't be that difficult at a mass scale. Yes, to start up, it would take a while. Now, if this stuff is legit, like if this company is has really found this secret source, if it really will work in the long term, that's the big if. We don't know, right? Really, what we need to know is, can these batteries work in an EV? Uh, can they work it for any sort of large scale projects? Uh, obviously, that's entirely different scale here to where we're at right now. They're probably just at the cell, the cell level right now, not the pack level or anything like that. We don't know that yet. But if they do, honestly, this is far better than solid state batteries because this would be much cheaper to manufacture. Much, much cheaper than trying to manufacture a solid state battery, trying to make production lines for solid state batteries. You could basically rejig existing production lines 
in order to have different anodes and cathodes, uh, modified anodes and cathodes with their chemistries, that would be much, much cheaper than manufacturing solid state batteries from scratch, essentially. So if it's legit, but we're years away from that. We're, we're probably three to five years away from them you know, being at that point where other companies, big companies say, oh, great, okay, you've verified this works at you know large production scale. At a, you've done all the testing to prove that it does. Let's use it. I think they're a fair way away from that. I could be wrong though. I don't know for sure. But I suggest that if these batteries were as good as this company claimed and they were near production level, then we'd see massive investments from companies. We'd see automotive industry companies investing in this in this business. And it would have happened within the last few days. It hasn't. Therefore, I believe it's probably at least a few years away. Thanks for watching.